The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse During his Olivet Discourse, Jesus described what will occur during the end times prior to his return to earth. Matthew 24, 21 and 22 For then shall be a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. These are the words of our Lord and Savior. These are the words of our King, the words of the Judge and the King of the universe. So let us open up the Word of God and see what the Bible says will take place during the Great Tribulation. We will read a few verses in Revelation chapter 6. However, before we do that, allow me to set the scene. In chapter 5, we see at the right hand of Him who sat on the throne, a scroll, written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. This is Almighty God, holding a scroll in His hand. Can you imagine that? The Creator of all heaven and earth, holding something in His hand. And we see that no one in heaven, or on the earth, or under the earth, is able to open the scroll, or to look at it. When John saw that, he began to weep and cry because no one was worthy to open it. But then, there was one who was worthy to open the scroll, and it is none other than the Lamb. And the Lamb is none other than Jesus Christ. The only one that has the authority to open it is the Lamb. The only one that has the power to open it is the Lamb. The only one that has the ability to open it is the Lamb. Who else has the right to open up the seals? except the Lamb, who shed His blood before the foundation of the world. And then we see the Lamb take the book from the one who sits on the throne, the one who is none other than God Almighty. Now, let us see the judgments that come upon this earth. Revelation 6, 1-8 And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see, and I saw, and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat therein to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another and that there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. You know what the opening of these seals tell me is that there is a time coming that the world has never seen before. There is a time coming on this earth that this world is not ready for. Such will be the sight of those days of great tribulation, and mortal men in the end will be led to surrender their own might and acknowledge the greatness of Jesus Christ. They shall then turn to the rocks and say, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits upon the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? 1. The White Horse Revelation 6, 1 and 2 Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. 
There was something about this first creature from the seal. He was riding a white horse. He also had a crown given to him with a bow. He rode out as a conqueror, who was all about conquest. If you read about this particular rider from different Bible scholars, you will find out that there are different meanings given to this rider. The white horse stands for peace. White means peace, and the bow he will use to conquer, like he is in conquest as an act of making people believe in him. There is one person I believe this scripture is pointing to, and it is the Antichrist. Jesus said when the Antichrist arrives, he will come when the earth needs him the most. When we hear of the Antichrist, all we think of is the violence. We believe he will wage war and kill many people, which is true, but not initially. In the beginning, he will unite the people of the earth before turning on them. The truth is that he will be on a white horse which signifies peace. The Antichrist will preach peace and conquer the hearts of many people. Matthew 24, 4 and 5 Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Today we can already see the stage being set up for the reign of the Antichrist, immersed in the systems, theories, and ideologies of this world, through entertainment, politics, economics, education, and science and technology. Children of God must therefore hold firm to the true light of God's Word, and they will not be conquered by this Antichrist. 2. The Red Horse Revelation 6, 3 and 4 When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword. The second rider is riding in on a red horse. Red means blood. It signifies war. The second rider will cause wars. He has a large sword with himself. Jesus mentioned this as the second thing also, in Matthew 24, 6. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Jesus said there would be wars, and he said all these things must happen. The fact that many wars have occurred over the course of history does not mean that this writer has already arrived. After the Antichrist has preached peace, and after he has conquered the hearts of man, the true agenda will come to play. The red horse will come out and do its work. This teaches us that only Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, can enthrone peace to the world and not the government or the philosophy of this world, not the Antichrist, because his peace will be fake and only temporary. We will see Jesus, the Prince of Peace, at work. The Bible foretells a thousand-year period when Jesus Christ will create on earth a world of peace and justice, without war and suffering. This period of time is known as the Millennial Reign of Christ. The peace that will come with this period will even affect the animal kingdom, the prophet Isaiah In Isaiah 11, 1 through 10 the prophet Isaiah saw a glimpse of the 1,000 years and offered a very clear picture of this future for us. Isaiah 11, 6 through 9 The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, the cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. What is described here is a complete change in the animal kingdom a time when the nature of wild animals will be changed. A child will walk among them in safety with no fear. Not only will the animal kingdom be changed, but the state of our lives will be. I want to introduce the son of Enoch, Methuselah, who is known for being the oldest man in the Bible. He lived to be 969. The Bible tells us that this age will be a normal occurrence for people during this time, 
we are told that health will improve so much so. Not only will we be able to live longer and healthier lives, and we'll be able to walk amongst animals we wouldn't go anywhere near today. Society will be safer. Children will be able to play on the streets. People won't have to lock their doors. Life will be lived without fear. People can walk home at night with no worry. All this will happen after the Great Tribulation. Why? Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. 3. The Black Horse Revelation 6, 5 and 6 When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil in the wine. This rider will cause famine. This should be of no surprise, because Jesus also mentioned this next when he was talking about the end times too. Matthew 24, 7 Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. 4. The Pale Horse Revelation 6, 7 and 8 When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The reign of death is the fourth plague that will befall the earth. The pale horse will ride through the land, striking men and women to the ground in their numbers. Jesus calls this time the beginning of sorrows in Matthew 24, 8. This is not to scare anyone. This is not to make us feel like we will all face this same fate as other unbelievers. God will not allow us to face all these, because we are His people, and we will not be faced with all these things. Psalm 145, 20 The Lord preserveth all them that love Him, but all the wicked will He destroy. He who has believed in the Lord, let him stand firm in faith and total confidence in the power of God to keep him to the end. And for those who have not believed in Jesus Christ, confess him today as your Lord and Savior, and you shall be saved from destruction. I want to ask you, how have you been living your life? What have you been doing with your life? Have you been taking all these warnings seriously? Or do you believe they are not real, or they cannot happen? God has warned us through John, and Jesus has also warned us. What else do you want? God will keep those who choose to run to Him for protection. This is the time to run to God through Jesus, and that is the only way you can escape these birth pains.